Awesome. Now we're going to go into our top 10. These teams are all insane. Um, they're really, really good. Um, they've, I think they're all playing remote, so we're going to have to see how they do coming up in person, but really excited to share all these teams. Giving you a voice. Making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. We would like to thank our friends at Striker for supporting fun so we can continue to make content for you. Striker makes some of the most revolutionary medical equipment and is a big supporter of FIRST and its participants. If you are looking for an internship or a career that supports you being in FIRST, check out careers.stryker.com to learn more. You can also directly support FUN by joining FUN Nation. Click the Join button and just for a few bucks a month, you'll unlock special perks and directly support us so we can keep making great content. So in the 10th spot is Team 16461, the Infinite Turtles from Matthews, North Carolina. Again, another North Carolina team. Even though the video quality isn't the best on this video, uh, it's one of the fastest spots. Uh, their drivetrain flies around the field since they got a backloading intake, so they, they do spin around a bit, but their drivetrain is able to handle it. They got 28 rings in with six rings in auto, helping them hit 355 points. Uh, North Carolina is really turning out to be a competitive region with multiple bots scoring over 300, and this is just one of them. Yeah, I mean, I know you said they have a uh, backloading intake for, um, for this meet. I think, based on what I've seen on the Discord, they're definitely going to a front-loading intake, but I, I could be wrong on that. But, you know, they've posted a couple of videos getting bounce-back shots uh, in auto and doing, you know, just really cool things with their robot. I'm excited for their next meet. I think it's going to be really, really good. Yeah, definitely with them pioneering the bounce back, that's pretty big and pretty impressive that they're going for it. Like, they're actually doing it. Um, yeah, definitely a team to watch. Like, they're so good. Yeah. Speaking of teams to watch, I think we can go to ninth. Uh, this team's robot reveal is something I have watched many, many times. Uh, in ninth, we have Team 18209 Primitive Data from Piedmont, California. It's interesting how even though Primitive Data hasn't competed in a single official event, they're still ranked so high on our top 25. Given their old practice world record match of 321 points in December and their insanely smooth turret design, it's no surprise that they're ranked this high. Um, and a according to some talk on the FTC Discord by their members, I think Primitive Data should be releasing a robot reveal in a, in the, in a few weeks or so. So... In the meantime, there is more than enough content to watch on their YouTube channel regarding cat tutorials and more. So I just can't wait to see what they put out for their robot V2. Yeah, I think they're supposed to compete in March is what I've been seeing on uh, the Discord. So really excited to see that. Um, from what I... Their, their turret is... There, there's only one other turret robot that I've seen implemented as well as theirs, uh, and that's AlphaGo. They didn't make the list, yeah. but they're another Chesapeake team. Um, so really excited to see what they go with if it's not going to be a turret because their turret was real quick. Um, so we'll have to take a look at that. Want to move on to the next one? Of course. Um, another NorCal team. And eighth is team 12635 Curiosity Robotics from Palo Alto, California. Last time this team competed was back in early December, and they still are at the top by most metrics. While they have aged relatively well, they have inevitably fallen behind a bit compared to other bots as far as shooting and indexing quickly goes. But I don't expect them to go up from here whenever they have another event. Like they had everything back in December, auto aim. Um, they're they're of course like blocking rings, of course, of them coming out. Like I, I really think that they have a far way that they might have gone. Yeah, Curiosity every year is just a solid team, and you know this year they're not disappointing anybody. I think, just as you said, can't wait until they have their next event. A lot of these California teams, really. Yeah, I, I think the the two to three regions, the the two regions that are super strong, North Carolina and California, have come out guns blazing. Um, Australia was also another region that has come out insane compared to what they've been doing in the past. So. Really excited to see a lot of these new regions growing, um, and hopefully they will continue that growth after the season. All okay, right. You want to go to the next one, Sean? Yep. Taking the number seven spot is Team 6323, the pink team from Rockledge, Florida. They've got an awesome custom robot with a bunch of pink. Uh, their pink mechanical wheel drivetrain is really quick, and they can do a bunch of 
uh, they do a great job blocking the rings um, from the return rack to pick them up quickly. Even with a disconnect, they were able to hit 366. <laughs> this is just, I can't make this stuff up. Uh, can't wait to see them in future events. Um, so in this match, I think you're going to see them disconnect in a second or two. They're going to stop. Brooks, do you know what the disconnect was? We actually didn't have any idea what was going on. It was happening in practice the day before, and we were just like, there's not enough time to deal with this. We'll just turn it off and on again or whatever. Um, we eventually did find the issue. We're pretty sure that like the cable talking to the control hubs was the cause, and we're good now, but that was pretty sad to see. <laughs> yeah, you could have broken 400 there. Um, I know, I know. We were so close. We have a lot of new developments, too, like the... Um, the arm, like the 6165 arm that goes down, we're doing stuff with that. Maybe we might get a video of that out soon because it seems pretty effective. But um, overall, I think we're going to do pretty well our next event. <laughs> Hopefully no disconnects. Yeah, just next week, right, Brooks? Oh, no. <laughs> it, it comes up so fast. <laughs> yeah. All right, next team? Yeah. In sixth place goes to team 18275 Sub Zero from Columbus, Ohio. They're one of three teams on the top 25 from the same event, which was Scarlet and Gray Qualifier. First off, another excellent looking robot with the black and blue and a superior uh, super fast intake, too. Everything about their bot is optimized and they are quick to go around the field. I can see their score going up a lot in the near future as they did miss a few of their shots and didn't go for the wobble goals at endgame. If they did, maybe this could be a 366 with Mr. Rings and Auto and Teleop, which would be very impressive. Yeah, yeah I really I mean, like their four-bar transfer to lift the rings up. That, that's a pretty cool mechanism there uh, in the back. Uh, Abbas, you were saying something? Yeah, I think uh, I think one of the reasons that you know you're, we're seeing a lot of these teams from the Scarlet and Gray qualifier is just that it's a you know it's a qualifier. You have to do well to get the state championship with like you know, the league meet system. The first meet, the second meet, you don't do too well. That's okay. You have some chances to make up your scores. But the qualifier, you know, it's your one and done shot. So Sub Zero really turned up at theirs. And as you were saying, Ashan, their transfer up with the four bars just really beautiful to watch each time. Yeah. So Tyler, before we go to the top five, do you want to open up a wager for who's going to be in the number one spot with a couple of the teams that we, we have we'll in do the, that. Top I'll put the top five? three in there and uh, we'll open up a wager so you can bet on who you think is going to be in the number one spot. Don't forget, fun bucks are free. Uh, you can just bet what you have, but you get more and you can redeem it uh, towards different things, including uh, fun swag. So we'll open it up in just a moment. Great. So All in right. the number five spot, do you want to go over the boss? Yes. So starting off our top five is Team 6165, MSET Cuddlefish from Saratoga, California. MSET Cuddlefish recently competed in the Fremont Qualifying Remote Tournament and took the leaderboard by storm. Being only the second team so far this season to score more than 35 rings in Teleop, 6165 is currently ranked fourth in the worldwide OPR and has the second highest Teleop average. And I think this is just a result of their fast shooter, smooth intake, and perhaps most uniquely, they're extending whispers or arms, whatever teams call it. And additionally, they seem to play all of their matches legally, you know, using only using their blocking arms when they're controlling less than three rings already. And uh, from what I've heard, they do have like some software um, enhancements and uh, things put in place to make sure, you know, they don't get any penalties for that. So I think that's definitely really cool. Yeah, awesome implementation of a robot. I think they have an FRC team as well. <laughs> Uh, that has been doing well. They competed with and against che Cheesy Poofs multiple times, um, and I knew somebody on that team. But really cool implementation of those arms. I think that's probably going to be on every single robot in the next week. Um, so <laughs> we'll see about to that. See, yeah, I'm interested to see how those arms hold up uh, for physical competitions, especially those they look 3D printed, definitely. So hopefully so they that's have That's one of the of nice things about competing virtually. You don't have to worry about a robot hitting you. You can have all sorts of really fragile parts on the outside of your robot. Um, I don't know how much help the arms will also be in an in-person competition because um, when you have two robots shooting next to each other, you're blocking all the rings anyways. So um, really, really cool bot there. Yeah, not to mention the return rack might have the um, rings go a little bit to the left, a little bit more to the right. Not as Might not be as refined as their return rack is. So that could impact it, too. Yeah. Sure. Yep. Just missing out on the top three is Team 11148, Parker Graybacks from Hornsby, Australia. 
We had them on on our last show, and there's not much else to say about them. Go watch that show. It's on YouTube, youtube.com slash first updates now. Uh, they talk a lot about how their team works, their design process and stuff like that. Really recommend it. Um, their entire process is amazing, and this machine is incredibly optimized. They said they can break 400, and I believe them. Um, the, with the World Championship, they said they'd rebuild. Um, and so I'm excited to see, hopefully there will be something that they can compete in at the world championship. Um, so we can see them at their highest potential. Yeah. And, you know, even more so impressive than their machining capabilities, I think was their whole program that they put, uh, their students through, you know, from pre-K or kindergarten through 12th grade, just every day there's something for them. Uh, that's just incredible. Yep. Yeah. Right now they're working on their F FRC bot. So exciting to see that coming out in the future and, um, overall, I, I can't wait to see more of this team. Yeah. Okay, I'll move on to third. And third is a team not unfamiliar to being ranked high. It's team 10435, the Circuit Breakers from Waukee, Iowa. As usual, their bot is super consistent and highly competitive too. After all, they did have the world record just a month ago. Their intake is quick and their shooter is one of the most consistent out there. Um, I don't think in their, like, 360 match they missed a single shot. There are even, like, I can even see them going up from here. Like, there are still places to improve. Like, they only collect three rings from the starter stack, and they might be able to speed up their shooter, too. And But as always, an impressive performance by Circuit Breakers. And I expect them to stay on the top for most of the season. I know they like to rebuild and just keep iterating as fast as they can. Yeah, I know they've had um, a couple competitions recently, and it, I don't know if they've changed too much because their scores definitely haven't changed. You know, they've stayed pretty much around where they did that first time they got the world record. Uh, so, you know, maybe sooner for the uh, Iowa State Championship, we'll see some really high scores or some really cool designs. Yeah. I know it's not unfamiliar. Like, I think Aperture might have went down by just some bad luck with rings and things. So, you know, maybe they might still, like, re get really high next event. Mm -hmm. Yeah, one of the things with these bots is improving consistency, right? In their first competition, I think they had a 200, like low 200 point match where they set this world record. Um, I, I think that they've been working on consistency, which has increased their ranking points significantly, allowing them to score higher. So really excited for that. But before we go on, that was our number three seed. We're now going to have our wager. Place your wager right now. Who do you think is going to be the number one seed? Uh, fifty-seven percent of you said eight seven one nine. Forty-three percent of you said fifty sixty-four. Let's take a look. What's the number two seed, Abbas? Okay, our number two seed for this month's top twenty-five is none other than eighty-seven one nine Quantum Leap. I mean, what can't this team do? From a blazingly fast one twenty-eight point auto to a shooter that makes it seem like their videos are sped up and physics-defying turn speeds, Quantum Leap is just really looking strong this year. At their first qualifier, not only did they set a new world record, but they also won the Inspire Awards, so congratulations to them on that. My only concern with their design is that they have to shoot farther back from the launch line, uh, launch zone line than normal, as I think their Lindexer extending over the tape makes it illegal, uh, you know, because it's intentional or uh, definitely incidental crossing over the launch zone line. Um, when shooting but you know I guess we'll have to wait for an official ruling or uh, for a head ref or any, anybody to say something on that besides just their robot quantum leap also recently posted um, on reddit and discord about a simulator they made called my Botic, my bot robotic simulator to help teams program during you know the current covid situations so quantum leap is definitely just really fast and 100% uh, the fastest shooting I've seen so far uh, I think I saw someone in the chat or somewhere say like 0.15 seconds or something like that that's just crazy yeah <laughs> really I, fast. awesome I, robot i've competed with them multiple times uh little little sketchy on some parts is what the discord is saying um but i would not want to be playing against them they again have a low shooter which could be blocked so we'll have to see ohio they I don't definitely know can angle it person. though Right. Yeah, I, they, they were able to adjust so. the angle on that shooter, which is really going to make them versatile because then they can shoot from anywhere on the field if they have odometry. So we'll have to see. Brooks, you were saying something? Yeah, um, like I remember when my team members like um, DMing me a video of them and like my jaw dropped. Like that <laughs> thing is just instant everything. Fast across the field, auto aim, 128 point auto. Like, uh, I, when I went seeing, I was thinking, this is, like, the perfect robot. But, obviously, um, some teams have 
done ever so slightly better. But, like, this is one of the top bots of the season. It's incredible. All right. And now everybody knows what the number one seed is. And it's Team 5064 after signs from Elon, North Carolina. Um, they're the current world record holders with the video posted. Um, and they didn't have a single match under 300 at the last call. Uh, they bought a Super Bowl drill bin. They can shoot a ton. And there's very little that I think they could do to get better than this. I'm excited to see if they make any changes and how they perform in their upcoming uh event um we're also going to be having them on our next show in two weeks on uh on march 3rd so make sure to tune in for that really excited to have them on um but overall just such an impressive robot and it's so simple yeah i know ishan when they posted their uh scrimmage videos or maybe like some real something really early you know you said uh, the only thing I think they can improve on is just driver practice. And after that, they're going to be really solid. And, you know, it looks like they did nothing else than that. And what do you know? You know, one of the best spots in the world right now, really consistent, just an incredible team all around. Yeah. I, I de definitely agree. Like, yeah, you can see super fast shooting, super fast intake. They hold the wobble to just to get that little edge they can. Everything about this is super, super optimized. And it's all like go build as well. Um, which is pretty cool too. Yeah, and, they, uh, before we, for the oh, past three years, they've been they've been doing really simple bots that are really well driven. In Relic Recovery, they were the first team to double cipher. Um, Rover Ruckus, they had a simple just two linear slides, and they were good. Skystone, they used I think they used a scissor lift, which was kind of unique, um, but they were still super effective. And then they did really well um, in this year. So really excited for that. Uh, we're now going to switch over to Kahoot. But before we do that, Tyler, you had a weird story well, you wanted weird, to share. Not just weird, but something that, uh, that came up when you were talking about the Rev compliant wheels that sparked to me that uh, I forgot to mention. So for those who uh, have been in FTC for a little while, uh, probably know Danny Blau from Animark. Uh, he is uh, has uh, left the company. Uh, so he is no longer. He's really one of the big uh, drivers of FTC. Uh, for Andy Mark, and he uh, ended up uh, essentially moving back home. I've known Danny for a really long time, uh, and his wife Renee as well, too, who are both Wisconsin natives, and they moved back to uh, Milwaukee uh, for that. So, uh, so Danny, uh, just want to give a shout out to him for all his years of service with FTC. Uh, it will be interesting to see how Andy Mark can uh, absorb uh, all the work he's done as well, too, with that. Uh, but yeah, just big shout out. If you know Danny, uh, just give him a big thank you for all the years of uh, work he's done uh, with Andy Mark and with FTC in general as well, too. Yep. Thanks, Danny. We, we we've had him on the show a couple of times and he's awesome to talk to. He goes he used to go to Worlds every year and I would talk to him a lot there. So definitely uh, one of the strong members in the FTC community. We would like to thank our friends at Stryker for supporting this video. Stryker is looking for current and future FIRST alumni to join their internship program and FIRST mentors who are looking for a great career with a company who actually supports their FIRST journey. Go to careers.stryker.com to learn more. You can also directly support FUN by joining FUN Nation. Click the Join button and just for a few bucks a month, you unlock special perks and directly support us so we can keep making great content. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.